it's it's true declassification of information not present to everyday people there's no monetary gain there's no profit being made he's going to be heading all the way out to the from 19 to 20 mile point go ahead and turn the uh the laser on i'm turning the laser on right now for a second. All the recordings with the P1000 observational camera contain two optical distortions inherent of the camera's design. The rolling shutter of the camera causes warping and blurring of the final recording caused by the top of the sensor being exposed before the bottom. This distortion is easily recognized by the jello-like appearance of the trees and is present across the entire frame of the recording. The second distortion is caused by the speed at which the shutter is set which is set at 1 125th of a second, though is reduced to as low as 1 80th of a second by the end of the recording. And although 1 125th of a second could be considered pretty fast, the more we digitally zoom into the recording, the more the recorded motion blur perceivably becomes. These are necessary factors to consider when viewing any documentation recorded with this camera.
nice ridge yet. <laughs> yeah, it's like a ramp instead of a wall. Yeah, you're gonna have to let me know when the tripod's coming up. I'm pretty zoomed in. All right. Joaquin is referring to a camera stand of about three and a half feet tall, positioned within a quarter mile of the camera for scale. I am also wearing high visibility clothing below my jacket line, resembling a girdle, which covers my hips and my groin section. Was that a question? <laughs> it's hard to hear you with the snow machine going. Um, Okay, let me know when to start zooming out. All right. Yep, ice field, you gotta go slow, got it? <laughs> I lost you for half a second. Uh, I was trying to reorientate, but I still got you. It's really hard.
I'm surprised we're not at the tripod yet. The windswept dirt hill behind me, which we often referred to as the sandy dune while out on the lake, is four and three quarters of a mile from the camera. Up until passing the dirt hill, I had been riding roughly a quarter mile to three quarters of a mile from the shoreline the entire time. Okay, I just keep going. I'll just... I'll put you more towards the top of the frame so I'm more likely to see the tripod. Okay, slow down. I see it. You can keep going a little bit. Yeah, the tripod's like way closer to me, obviously. But I got both of you in frame right now. The top of the tripod is like, it's like it's hitting where the lake meets the land on the frame. I got you both in frame. Keep going. You just crossed it. You just crossed it. The top of the bare aluminum on the snow machine tunnel is one foot four inches above the ice. Slow down, you're getting close, you're really close, you're really close. You're about to cross it right now. You're crossing it right now, you're, you're covered by it right now. It's covering you completely right now. You're on the other side right now. Standing at six foot five feet in my full snow machine gear at 5.2 miles away with a camera observational height of three and a half feet on a spherical surface of 3,963 miles and a horizon distance of 2.3 miles from the camera, only the tops of my shoulders and my helmet are to be visible. Hold on, I'm zooming back in right now. Let me get you in focus if I can. Um, you're walking to the left of it now. You were there was a time when you were it was between us. You're moving to the left of it more and more now. so much. Yeah, I see you driving off to the left now. Due to the prolonged exposure to the cold, this is sadly the best view recorded from my perspective. It is also where our communications completely quit as there was a faulty transmitter in my radio. Okay, did you hear my sentence now? Over. My antenna is fully extended. I can barely hear what you're saying. Caleb, I'm not sure if you're trying to contact me, but I haven't heard you in a while. Moving to 
After riding that approximately 100 feet further and dismounting, it began to become quite apparent there was no way for me to document how far I was going to ride after this failure of communication. However, not wanting to abandon the observation, I remounted the snow machine and proceeded to accelerate up to 30 miles per hour my standard cruising speed on a beeline towards Bear Creek. According to the timestamp of the video, this was done for about 35 seconds, which places me approximately one third of a mile further down the lake. The brake light on the snow machine is briefly seen as I locked the brakes in frustration. It's located only a foot and a half above the surface of the ice. With a curvature drop of 20.2 feet at five and a half miles, all six and a half feet of me is to be blocked by the purported sphericity of the ground. It is so cold. Caleb, can you hear me on the radio? I can't, I can't keep my hand out like this. It's not gonna happen. He's gotta come back. Because the high wind turbulence homogenizes the temperature and density gradients, no uniform directional refraction is occurrable, and at this distance, I am half a foot too short to be seen were there any sphericity to the ground. So, thanks for viewing this intelligence report. More data is being compiled, and as always, is at no cost to you. As the truth is to be always freely given. Again, thank you.